If you have plans to do a little spring planting, there are some simple things you can do that would have a big impact on the struggling monarch population. Kylie Burse is live on the U of M St. Paul campus this morning learning what people can do in their own backyards. Hi, Kylie. Hi, Kim. Yeah, we're in the middle of this beautiful garden here at the U of M at the St. Paul campus, and we are so excited to have Cora with, uh, with us from the Monarch Joint Venture. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me a little bit about what the Monarch Joint Venture is. Absolutely. So we're a national partnership of Monarch Conservation Groups, and we're housed right here at the University of Minnesota, um, and we're working to make sure that the monarch migration is protected for future generations. So uh, we hear a lot about, you know, maybe the monarch population isn't doing as well. Why is it so important to help protect uh, the species. Yeah, that's totally right. So the monarch population has declined by about 90% in the past 20 years alone. And it's really important to make sure that they have enough habitat that they need. Um, one of the reasons that that population has gone down so much is that they've lost the milkweed and nectar flower habitat that they need to survive, reproduce and migrate. And we are actually in the middle of a garden that is so perfect for the monarchs this morning. Tell us a little bit about what you have in this garden. Absolutely. So we have um, a variety of different milkweed species. We also have some beautiful columbine blooming, blooming right now. Um, we have some anise hyssop over here. We have all kinds of different native wildflowers, which are really important for the adult monarch butterflies to drink the nectar of. I know we were talking earlier about this idea of a butterfly garden, that people are actually taking the time to plant a specific garden in their yard to kind of help the monarchs. Is that something that you're seeing? Absolutely, yeah, and that's exactly what we have going on here as well, right outside our office. Um, it's becoming really, really popular, and we're so glad that more people are aware of what's going on. We just really want to encourage everyone to plant milkweed and nectar plants for the monarchs themselves. Have you started to see any this season? I saw my first one on Tuesday last oh. week, yeah. And you were saying that it, at, below what temperature they, they can't flap their wings. It's really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, their uh, biology is amazing. So at below 55 degrees, monarch butterflies can't fly, which is probably why we haven't been seeing very many in the rainy weather right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so if people want to learn a little bit more about maybe planting a butterfly garden or what they can do to make sure that they have uh, the proper resources to help the monarch population, what can they do? Well, they can go to our website, the Monarch Joint Venture, which is just monarchjointventure.org, and you can find information about what we do as well as information about creating monarch habitat of your own. Awesome and it is beautiful when you look behind us to see kind of a garden like that. What a cool idea to get together with the kids and take time say like hey let's plant this garden but it has such an important role in you know of the butterfly that we would love to see in the garden too. Yeah you know when you think about it Kylie I remember as a kid you would see monarchs everywhere in your backyard or just out sure. on the trail and it's sad you don't see them as often so let's Let's plant well, some Kim, you got to plant that butterfly back. garden. Yes. I know you have the space for it. I'm going to get on it. All right, Kylie, thank you. The monarch butterfly population numbers are at historic lows, but there are ways for you to help during planting season. Kylie is live at the U of M St. Paul campus this morning with uh, more on what you can do in your own backyard to help those butterflies have uh, somewhere to come visit. Hi, Kylie. Hi, Jason. Yeah, we're live in front of a garden this morning on the University of Minnesota St. Paul campus. It's beautiful here, but what's special about all these plants is they will all bring in those monarch butterflies to your yard and help kind of create that thriving population that we're trying to get to once again. We have Cora here from the Monarch Joint Venture. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me a little bit about what the Monarch Joint Venture is. Yeah, so we are a national partnership of monarch conservation organizations, and we're housed right here at the University of Minnesota, working to make sure that the monarch migration continues for a few Future generations. So tell us a little bit about what's happened to the monarch population because it's dwindled quite a bit. Yeah, that's totally right. It has. Um, the population has declined by about 90% in the past 20 years alone. Um, and so it's really important to create enough habitat to bring the monarch population back. Um, and they need milkweed for the caterpillars to eat mm -hmm. and also native nectar plants, um, native wildflowers like columbine and anise hyssop that you'll see in our garden here are great examples of nectar plants that you can plant to help the monarchs. And those all do really well in Minnesota. We can plant them in our gardens at home too. Definitely. And so when it comes to actually finding these plants, you guys have a lot of resources on your website. Is it something that you hear from people that they do want to plant these? They want to have a butterfly garden? Yeah, it's becoming more and more popular, especially as people are paying so much more attention to pollinators and how important they are for our health and our ecosystems and hearing about how, um, you know, 
how much the monarch butterfly has declined. It really hit, hits people at home. We want to make sure that they continue. And it's kind of fun too. If you do this with your kids, you can almost turn this into a little bit of a science lesson and take them out into nature because you said that once the milkweed is planted, uh, you can actually go and find the eggs on there. Yeah, so milkweed is the only plant that monarch butterflies will lay their eggs on since it's the only thing that caterpillars eat. So if you have milkweed in your garden, you can go out with your kids, with your friends, and um, join a citizen science project <laughs> to look for um, monarch butterfly eggs and larvae and see what you find. When you get to kind of show those off to the kids and teach them about it, what's the experience that you that you see them go through? It's amazing. Monarch butterflies are this ambassador for other pollinators and the environment and you know everyone has a butterfly story I feel like <laughs> and it's just a great way to teach people about the environment and pollinators and what they need. Fantastic. So your website that people can find all the information is? MonarchJointVenture.org. Fantastic. And we'll link to that as well. Cora, thank you so much for getting up early. It's kind of nice, though, to hang out in the morning in a beautiful butterfly garden. I love the idea of kind of planting that in the yard and making it into a science project with your kids. You know, Kylie, these uh, plants that monarchs are attracted to are beautiful plants. So if you're going to plant stuff, it just makes yeah. sense, you know? Well, oh, they like really it. are, especially the columbine. I don't know yeah. if you did you see yes. that the red flowers that we have blooming. So cool. Love it. Really good. Thank, good stuff. Thanks, Kylie. Kim.